Dr. Liz, welcome to Deep Into Sleep. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. I'm glad you're back. You're one of our audience、uh, favorite hypnosis <laughs> talking about、oh. here. Well, fantastic! It really is an honor because you have such amazing guests on. I just heard、um, the neuroscientist Jill. What's her last name?、Um, I don't remember her last name, but she was an amazing interview. And I've heard、um, another one that you did recently where they were talking about nutrition. You just have such great guests. So I was like, "Yay! I'm invited back. I'm so happy." Yeah, so、um, definitely, I'm glad you are here. I got a lot of questions from audience about whether hypnosis could help them.、Uh, what's the difference between CBTI versus hypnosis? So I heard Dr. Liz, you know sleep quite well. You know both CBTI and hypnosis. So very excited to chat with you more、uh, deeper about this topic. Yes, I think the last time I was on, I had not gone through the CBTI、uh, formal training yet, and so I did go through that earlier this year, and it, I found it really, really fascinating. And I found、um, I was doing a lot of things right. That's just from like my own knowledge and my own knowledge of sleep over the years and everything I had learned about it, and the hypnosis. Adds a different piece to it, absolutely. So there are some differences there, and I'd be happy to talk about that. Yeah, great. So as、um, experienced clinical clinical psychologist who also been helping a lot of people with sleep disorders、uh, with hypnosis method, when you went through the CBTI course formally, I'm curious, what it, was there anything shocking to you, or was there anything Interesting or stand out to you? I won't say there's anything shocking to me. I will say that, but there is definitely things that stood out to me. I, I think one of the biggest pieces I learned actually is that is who CBTI is not for. So that was really interesting to me. And they say it's not for someone who has a seizure disorder. It's not for someone who's bipolar, and it's not for someone having panic attacks. Like you can do a modified protocol. And basically, when they talked about the modified protocol, it's everything I've been doing. Right? It's a much gentler approach. It's slower. It's using more of the meditative relaxation techniques. So I found that really, really interesting, and also some of the research behind it as well that they presented in that training, that it is very helpful the meditative techniques to reduce insomnia.、Mm. Very interesting. So this method, I think, in my podcast, we talk about that a lot. So CBTI, CBT for insomnia, is evidence-based treatment for insomnia right now.、Um, but you mentioned very important point that it does not apply for everyone.、Mm -hmm. Yes. So those are added to my screening questions now, right? When I talk to someone on the phone, I'm like, "All right, do you have a history of this?" And I'm working with someone right now who has the history of panic attacks, and so we're using a modified approach with her to help her decrease her insomnia.、Mm, great. So now, do you feel like after you're learning more about CBTI,、uh, the standard protocol? Do you see any places you can combine hypnosis techniques and CBTI techniques? Absolutely, yes. So when you come in for a hypnosis, it's not like you're just like laying down on my couch and I have a magic wand and we're good to go, right? We already do some talking and we figure out what's going on. What areas are you struggling with? Are you having problems falling asleep? Are you having problems waking up too early or waking up too much in the middle of the night? Like we're talking about all of these things, and I think CBTI gave me more of a structure. About how to do that, like more、um, a good place to start, a good place to move to, so that when I'm combining the two,、um, it feels a little bit more structured than it did before. But I think one of the differences when people seek me out is that they are looking for more of a meditative technique. 
to really help them relax, stop the mind going so much, you know, let go of some of the worries and hypnosis is really good for that. Mm. So sounds like um, not only talking about the psychoeducation about sleep and behavioral techniques, cognitive techniques, but this meditated uh, technique, this approach. Yes. Mm-hmm. Some is that yes. guided meditation type of thing, guided hypnosis type of yes strategy. Yes, exactly. It's more guided, and so my goal when someone's in my office is that they're independent of me, right? That they don't have to use me to fall asleep or use my voice to fall asleep, and that they have a skill that they can use themselves. So I've said this for years. And I think that was reinforced in the CBTI training, because one thing that I learned is that they shouldn't really be using the hypnosis file as a pill, let's say, right? So instead of taking their sleeping pill, they're putting on their hypnosis file, and then they're conditioning themselves to like only be able to fall asleep with that hypnosis file, right? We don't want that to happen. We want them to learn self-hypnotic skills so that they can relax themselves, so that they can wind down, so that they have some tools in the toolbox to be able to feel better. Even let's say they wake up at, you know, in the middle of the night, three or 4 a.m. and they're like wide awake and they're like, what do I do now? So we walk through that in terms of them being able to use the skill themselves and also when not to use it. So that was something that was a big piece. Like this should not be, the hypnosis should not be a pill, right? Don't use it like that. Um, And you can try it, let's say in the middle of the night, someone wakes up, let me get more specific here. And they put on the hypnosis file at first, and then eventually they learn how to do that themselves. And they're using that skill themselves, but then they're still wide awake, right? Well, then at that point, that's the point to get up. It's sort of like, all right, you could read maybe a little bit in the middle of the night, but if you're not getting sleepier again, you really do need to get out of bed and do something else. And so this is often, there's one specific countdown technique that I use that I teach everyone who comes through my my practice. If if they stay long enough, we don't don't start with this one because there's a lot to cover, but um, it's more towards the end. And I use it myself. I contract with myself like, okay, if I get from a hundred down to zero and I'm still awake, then I need to get out of bed. So it's using something like that. And, you know, 95% of the time people drift off, including myself, right? Because (laughs) it's relaxing, right? We're going back to sleep, but, um, but it's using it sort of as a tool of, okay, time to get up, do something else, wait for sleepiness, then go, go back to bed, which is the CBTI method. Basically, you wait for sleepiness before you go to bed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like it. I think uh, it's important for people to hear and understand that uh, it's coping strategies, it's different tools but just like, um, don't try to use the tools to control sleep, right? Just like exactly. we, if we fix a car, we can have such a big two box. We can use this, we can use that. We can just try, but nothing gonna guarantee that, oh, I use this magical tool. The car gonna magically just get better and everything got fixed immediately. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. It is one of the tools to fix the car, right? That like has this going on or that going on. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And occasionally I'll get someone in my office who's just desperate. Like they say, I'm just so tired and I can't sleep. And, and the, of course, during the hypnosis, they feel they fall right asleep, right? Like that does happen. <laughs> absolutely. But again, my goal with them is like, okay, let's do this today, but my goal for you is to learn all of these tools so that you can use them so that you don't have to go to the car shop, right? To fix your car. You can fix your own car yourself. And there's like basic things that you can do. And it actually happens very, very quickly. One of the things I learned that um, did surprise me, actually, I wouldn't say shocked, but surprised is that people wait 10 years typically to help And you can, CBTI is generally four sessions. And even when I combine it with hypnosis, we're we're generally talking four to six sessions. And it's like that 
is so fast. When you think about suffering for 10 years versus like you can have so much better sleep in four weeks, essentially, right? Or if you're doing every other week, eight weeks, right? It's like that to me just feels like a miracle to offer somebody. And I wish more people knew that. Yeah, that's my question based on what you learned, your own clinical experience, whether you are experiencing similar things as me, that not many people know there is such evidence-based treatment out there for insomnia to help Absolutely. your sleep, right? When I give lectures in the Chinese community, a lot of people are taking medication, a lot of people struggling with insomnia for, yes, several years, up to 10 years, or even more than that. They have no idea what is CBTI. When I mentioned that, they were like, huh? Like many people ask me, can I use medication my whole life? Is there any side effects of that? I was like, mm -hmm. better methods out there than just a sleeping pill. Absolutely. Yes. And some of the side effects of the sleeping pills are pretty scary. And I live in South Florida. I actually work with people all over the US, all over the world. But you can imagine I get a lot of people that are local and there's so many elderly here, older adults. And often they'll say, yeah, I've been on a sleeping pill for 10 or 15 years. And now either their doctors cut them off or they're like, I'm starting to have memory problems and it doesn't make me feel great and I want to get off of them. And it's so sad to me that like nobody informed them, hey, this can increase your risk for Alzheimer's, right? This can increase your risk for like really awful diseases. No one told them that or offered them an option of a non-medication option. Like, hey, there's something out there that you can do to improve your sleep, improve your insomnia and by the way, there's no side effects at all. Yeah, but it does require some um, some collaboration. I think uh, whoever going through CBTI method, that's pretty hard is how to follow the instructions, treatment suggestions. Following it is difficult, but I notice if people follow it, the results actually pretty good. I don't know whether it's the same to yes. experience. Oh yeah, absolutely. The results are phenomenal. Is what I would say. <laughs> you know, I mean, they really are. It's not just the research. It's also, like you've said, your own clinical experience working with people. Is it? It plays out the research, right? It supports it. Like people's sleep improves drastically. I did run a course last year, and well, I'm not quite sure when this is going to air. I ran a course in 2020. It was four weeks and it wasn't even CBTI, it was hypnosis for insomnia, but obviously I was using a lot of CBTI techniques without even really knowing it, right? <laughs> but those, everyone in the course improved their sleep a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And one of my friends took it and I still talk to her and she's like, Elizabeth, you have no idea how much that has changed my life. It's a year later and I'm still using so many of those techniques and I am less stressed and I have less anxiety and it, it really helped turn a lot of things around for her. Wow, amazing. Think about when we cannot sleep well, how suffering, how frustrating that is, especially we, when we sleep well, we think of sleep is so naturally, so easy, not even think about that. But when we cannot sleep well or cannot fall asleep, we are trying all the method when they don't work. Oh, <laughs> that's yes. Really yeah, right. And the reason I'm a sleep specialist is because I struggle with sleep most of my life. And so then I began specializing in that area. And eventually I found hypnosis and I felt like that was a miracle. And now CBTI feels like it's a double miracle, right? But it's like, I know the feeling of really struggling. I know the feeling of feeling like, oh, this is never going to end, right? Like, how am I going to function tomorrow? I know um, that, you know, something I did learn during the CBTI course is how much CBTI actually improves depression and anxiety and PTSD, even when people aren't getting treatment for that, 
this, the CBTI will improve that. And so it's like, wow, that feels amazing to me too, to feel like sleep affects so much, right? We know it affects depression, anxiety, stress. We know it affects weight loss, right? We know it affects um, performance, right? They have all these studies in the military that tell us about that. So to improve it in, in such a brief period of time, I think really does change people's lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm curious, you do a lot of coaching for sleep. So when you do coaching, what are some big components you are using to help your clients? So you help our audience understand if they, you know, know someone needs the coaching, they can go to you and they can explain, oh, that's what she, how she works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one of the main components that we look at is your chronotype which it's a fancy word for saying, you know, when is the best time for you to sleep, right? So there's not just the early birds and the night owls. There's actually, I, I use a system that uses like the four chronotypes and you, they can actually take a free quiz online. If you just Google it up, chronotype quiz, it'll pop right up. I think it's Michael, Dr. Michael Bruce, mm-hmm. who runs that quiz is one of them. I think there's a couple. Um, the only thing I would say is that his newsletter sells a lot of products. So just be aware of that. (laughs) Like he gives really good information to you. I don't want to disparage him, but, um, but I don't really believe that you need a whole lot of products to improve your sleep. I really don't. I mean, a nice pillow is nice and a nice mattress is nice, but, um, you know, some of the best sleepers in the world sleep on the ground, right. On a little mat or, or like nothing. So just realize that, but back to the chronotypes, it's like, all right, is someone trying, is someone truly a, a night owl, what we tend to think of that, but they're trying to fit their sleep into an early bird schedule. And so we really look at fitting your lifestyle around your sleep. Now I have a daughter with a delayed sleep phase disorder. Now she has 15. So I'm not going to say like, we well, are still waiting, like a lot of kids reverse their sleep when they're teenagers, you know, they really want to sleep in a lot and um, stay up late. And we know that some of that is practicing for adulthood, right? Because adults are asleep and they get to sort of make themselves some food and, you know, socialize and that type of thing. And some of that is hormonal, what's going on. But, um, but she is is really sort of an extreme version of that. So when we're looking at something like that, then we know um, CBTI is not effective for that, right? That's a whole different ball game. But when you're looking at just like, okay, um, I prefer to fall asleep at midnight, but I have a job where I have to wake up at 5 a.m. And I know my ideal functioning is like seven to eight hours, then we have a problem there, right? So we look at that. We look at how much sleep is ideal for you. Where does it fit into your own lifestyle? Where does it fit into your genetics? Because your chronotype is really genetic is what they believe. And you can shift it some. There's an interview on your podcast, um, Ishan, where she had changed her she was a night owl and she had changed to like an, an early bird. Yeah. Do you bird. remember who it was? Yeah, that was my colleague, actually. Uh, we went to Kaiser for training together. So Dr. Sarah Bur- uh, Burton. And I think, yes, she shared her experience how to shift from night owl to early bird in, in all the yes. work in the hospital. <laughs> yes. So it is possible, but it is typically very difficult And if someone, like, if we flash forward to retirement when they're not working, they're probably going to revert to their old pattern is my guess, you know, so. Yeah, she actually mentioned every time she take an international trip or vacation, she has to come back to redo it. Oh, really? Oh, I don't remember that part. That's interesting. So it's like, yeah, her default is still going to like come up. So we talk about that. What is your default? And then do you want to make the effort to shift that? Or can you have a lifestyle that fits your sleep? So, so many people do. And there's there's great utility for the third shift workers, right? We need them, right? (laughs) We need people who like to stay up at night. They're great for our society. But at the same time, it's like, if that's not a good fit for you, 
then how do we shift that so that, or how do we work around it? I mean, sometimes people's jobs require that, but it's like, how do we work around it so that it feels better, so that it feels healthier? So those are just two of the things we look at. We also look at um, some sleep hygiene, meaning like, do you prepare yourself for night? Do you make sure your bedroom is set up appropriately? Do you have a buffer zone or a wind down time? But we also know that that's not enough, right? People don't get better just with doing that because that's usually the first thing people try, right? Like that's all over the internet of like, make sure you have the blackout curtains. And it's like, okay, the blackout curtains aren't going to fix insomnia. We already know this, right? It's helpful. So th- it's helpful, right. But it's not going to like do the whole bit. So we look at that type of thing. And, um, and then we also look at the cognitive piece going on, the thoughts, the anxiety, the stress around how do you reduce all of that so that you can have a more peaceful sleep so that you learn how to sort of, you know, um, turn off your brain some so that a lot of that is not coming up right when you're trying to sleep or it's not interrupting your sleep. So sometimes that's a temporary thing that happens for people. We know that at a time of stress, that's actually pretty complete. That's pretty normal for your sleep to be interrupted a little bit. But if it's something that's chronic, that's when someone's in our office, right? (laughs) They're saying, okay, how do we look at this piece so that you can have some wind down time? I mean, a specific example of that is for myself, I cannot read business books right before I go to sleep, right? And often I can't even read like psychology type books for my practice. I can't do that in in bed. I like to read a little bit before I go to sleep. It has to be something very light, like fiction or, um, you know, I like to read some spiritual stuff sometimes that's that's very reassuring to me. Something like that helps me wind down versus if I read something business-wise, like my brain starts going with all these ideas and that's the opposite of what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Similar here. So I also read fictions before bedtime. I think that's a thing or to help myself relax. So sounds like it's very important for us to understand what works for us individually. Yes. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. People ask me, what can I do during the wind down? What can I do before bedtime? I was like, I can offer some options, suggestions. There's some huge list over the years Stanford uh, Sleep Clinic has created, but everyone's different. If you look at the, the list, some people find very soothing by organizing and working. Yeah a little bit in the kitchen <laughs> some people find it's exhausting they don't like it right for you and me yes. reading fictions novels possibly better but for some people they possibly like to watch politics and other things before bedtime absolutely yes i was just thinking about this this morning actually when um, my 15 year old was little i used to have to run her okay so for most kids you know, you're like, oh, you do the bath, you do the nighttime story, you do very soothing things when they're little. And it just none of that was working for her. And so one of my friends finally said, you know what, I run my son before bed. And I was like, what? She's like, oh, yeah, I run him all around the house. I run him around the blocks sometimes. Like he's got to get that final bit of energy all out. So that's what I used to do with her. And that is like the antithesis of, of what most sleep books say for kids, you know? So it really is individual. You've got to figure out what works for you. And if you have a child, what works for your child? Yeah. Wow. Um, I think, again, that really emphasized your earlier point. All these are tools. How to use the tools. When to use the tools use which tool that works for us or our children that needs yes. that practice, trying, trial and error, maybe, and hope. Absolutely. And hope, right? <laughs> I like that the last ingredient is the most important, and hope. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So Dr. Liz, after you, now you have so much knowledge about sleep and you have been doing hypnosis for so long, um, if our audience want to find you, what kind of service are you offering right now for sleep in the sleep field? 
Yes, right now I'm offering one-on-one -on -one work if they want to do that. I'm also working on a self-paced course. So something that they can um, go through the videos themselves. And I may do a combined model where it's like I'm answering Q and A's. Um, I'm not quite sure when, or when that's going to be up, but th those are things that if they go to my website, drlizhypnosis.com, that's D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com, then they'll see what's available. So I know last year I ran the live course and I don't think I'm going to do that anytime soon, but they could always go there and see. And again, if they join my newsletter, I always put it out in the newsletter as well. Right. So those are the options for them. Wonderful. So if people need yeah. any sleep coach and to improve sleep, find go to find Dr. Liz, either one-on-one -on -one or this upcoming course, really look forward to it. Absolutely. Oh, and my podcast too. I almost forgot to mention that. <laughs> Sorry. My podcast is Hypnotize Me. And it's I'm in my fifth year now, fifth season. Uh -oh. There's also a free hypnosis for insomnia on there. And it has some information at the beginning and then um, a tool that you can learn how to do yourself. So that's also an option for them. They can also, also listen to my podcast if they want some free help that way. Great. Yes. So people can subscribe your newsletter, can follow you on your podcast. I'm sure when your course get launched later, you will announce it on your podcast. Absolutely. Like what yes. I did. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Well, you're one of my inspirations, like we were talking before, and I see you have a course up and running, and I'd heard that earlier on the podcast, and I was like, yay, Sean, that's, that's amazing. So that's a good option for people as well. Yeah, wonderful. Yes, mine is in Chinese, yours is going to be English, and I yes. think your course is going to be very unique because you're going to combine CBTI and hypnosis that are going to possibly benefit a lot of people. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Wonderful. So any last wisdom, Dr. Liz, you want to share with our audience? Yes. If you're having a problem with your sleep, reach out, reach out really to either Dr. Xu or myself or someone in your area. You can always Google up CBTI experts in your area. It is so easy to to quote unquote fix, right? It's so easy to ameliorate. It's so easy to get some help to help you sleep better. And that just changes your life. So please reach out for help. Great. Thank you, Dr. Liz. Thank you for watching our videos or listening to our podcast. If you like our show, please feel free to subscribe, like, and share it. If you have any questions or feedback, we would always love to hear from you. You can either email us or leave feedback on our website at mindbodygarden.com or directly under the YouTube video channel. Thank you very much for your company today and hopefully to hear from you or have you with us next time.